The gunfight started just after midnight. A Patriot attack was coming from somewhere out there in the dark, and the Redcoats manning Stony Point returned fire. They didn't know that the real danger was behind them, scaling the walls silently, bayonets ready. In the summer of 1779, a large British force was sent up the Hudson River. They took the river crossing at Stony Point and fortified it. It sent a message to George Washington that the British could take territory when they wanted to. Washington decided to send the message back. He rode the Stony Point personally to observe the British defenses. He also had one of his officers pretend to surrender and enter the fort to find its weak points. A bold plan of attack was devised, with the Light Infantry Corps at its heart. They were the Continental Army's elite troops. Just after midnight on July 16th, the Patriots went into action. The main force placed pieces of white paper in their hats so they could see each other in the dark. Then they waded through the river and climbed the hill to the south. The other forces approached from the opposite side. Some Patriots stayed at a distance to keep the Redcoats distracted by musket fire, while others scaled the wall. The Patriot commander, General Anthony Wayne, had ordered his men not to load their muskets. Speed was of the essence, and he didn't want to lose any time reloading. They went in with bayonets only. The plan worked. By the time the Redcoats realized that the musket fire was just a feint, it was too late. After just 25 minutes of fighting, the British commander surrendered. The Continentals had taken Stony Point along with 400 prisoners, and they'd only lost 15 men. The fort wasn't worth holding. They stripped it of artillery and supplies and abandoned it. But they'd proved a powerful point. The Redcoats were not the only ones capable of carrying out daring bayonet raids. The Continental Army had become every bit the equal of the feared British Redcoats. <laughs> 